We are in ninth grade lit, and we are working our way through 10 to 12. Our goal is to get to 15. Um, in case you didn't know, they are headed down. Remember, well, I don't know if we've, we've done this, but you know where they are? Just look at the top of the page, it'll tell you. What page are we uh, 143. Anybody, can you tell from that where we are? Look at the top of the page. Where are we? Either page. I can't hear you. Okay, they have now descended. How did they, do we know how they got there? We don't, do we know how they got there yet? I don't think so. Uh, 64, yeah we do. No we don't. So we don't know how they got there. The reason I say it, because there's a sheer cliff. They're at the top of the cliff in the previous canto, and they're looking, well, they're looking straight down. They can't possibly climb it. They can't fly, even though they're kind of supernatural. Um, so they have to they have to get down there somewhere. What's at the bottom? It tells you at the top of page 143. What's, what, what is the first, like, ge geographical marker of the seventh circle? Yeah. River. All right, so you got river, you got woods, and you got sand. Those are, these are the three things we're going to finish up with. <laughs> Uh, th those are some, some things that you're looking for as you review for this is the geography of hell because you got rivers you got castles you got um, in this case you got sand and you've got woods uh, you, you do have all sorts of uh, interesting geography uh, so they are uh, they're trying to enter this first circle with the river of blood so um, Lauren would you start? For us, oh, about who tried to stop them? Do we know that? Uh, we did read this. The Minotaur. The Minotaur, which is half man, half bull, and you know anything about the Minotaur? Uh, Daedalus made a labyrinth for Minos, the king of Crete. Stop me if I'm wrong. I'm, I don't remember all this as well maybe as you do, but Devos made the labyrinth and in the labyrinth Minos put the Minotaur. And was it Theseus who went and found his way through the minute, uh, through the, the labyrinth and did something? Did he kill the Minotaur? Is that what he did? You, you don't know either. Okay, well, I'm, I can't tell you much there. But anyway, that's the Minotaur. Um, what are the, okay, what does the Minotaur represent? In, in a minute, we're going to see the centaurs. So who are the centaurs? Yes. So what are those? Remember, they're in the circle of violence. Half man, half bull, half man, half horse. What is the half business got to do with it? Yeah. You guys, people in that circle are not, are like not fully human. Like they're like if you lose your temper at that moment, you're not really fully human. <laughs> That's sort of what this is saying. If if you if you let your temper sweep you away, and you. You end up using violence. People who do that you see it in the news all the time. Uh, people who uh, kill people out of you know just complete, they freak out in anger or they anyway. That's like animals, not humans. Humans have a brain. Humans should use the brain, the good of the intellect. And so that's why the half this and half that. That you're not really fully human. Um, so Lauren is going to start for us at the top of the page.
All right, thank you. Um, again, I don't know if you have all of these are questions. I'm not sure that they are, but I want you to know it. Um, let's see, 50, well, we're not there yet. 50, we're answered, we just answered 50. 51, you're gonna, we'll answer on the next page. Um, so you need to know this. So if it's not on a question here, doesn't mean I'm not gonna make you know it, so you can write it in the book. How do they get around the Minotaur? Yeah, he, he mocks the Minotaur for being killed by Theseus, who is the Duke of Athens. Um, and that's why the Minotaur is here, because he got killed up there by Theseus, and he mocks him. Now, it seems to me that's not the best thing to do if you're trying to avoid getting eaten by a half bull, half man. Don't make him angry, right? Don't make the guy angry. You know, don't make the dog angry. That's the last thing you want, or is it? It's certainly, what is it, counterintuitive? Don't get them angry, they'll chew you to pieces. But that's exactly what he does. But there's a reason behind it, why? Now, I don't know about girls, um, but I know guys in sports, certain sports, track's not one of them, but the team sports, um, they like to trash talk. Why does one guy on the other side of the line of scrimmage trash talk the guy that's standing in front of you or because what well it might be fun but is it smart you're making the guy mad this is football people hit each other why do you want to make him mad so they mess up more but say that again so they mess up more why would they mess up because they got mad that's exactly why you want to get them mad you want to distract them um you want to get them off their game, and so that's exactly what Virgil does to the Minotaur. He taunts him, talks trash to him. The Minotaur is so angry, he describes him like a bull in a ring. You know, he's just thrashing about, and that guy, had, that particular animal, has no way to think now. It's the idea, if you lose your temper, you're not thinking, you're just acting. And so they were able to get around him by distracting him. What's mentioned 49? What's, would you mind reading it? You're, it's, uh, it says, what is Virgil's answer to Dante's question of why do usury the crime against God's bounty? Anybody feel co uh, comfortable or confident enough to answer that question? What's wrong with usury? Yeah, well. Excessive interest on money. That's what it is, but what's wrong with that? Why is there anything wrong with that? Like cheating God out of money. Um. Well, that's, that's not the answer. It, it's really not God's money that you're cheating. You're cheating somebody else. But why is it cheating? Yeah. Because um, you're not supposed to make money off of money. Yes. Money is sterile. Money doesn't reproduce itself. You didn't work at it. Yeah. It's not like usury or whatever. Yes. Okay. But you didn't, you didn't do anything. You gave somebody 100 bucks. remember, out of the goodness of your heart. They didn't force you to do it. It's not like an act. They said, can I borrow 100 bucks? And you said, okay, but you're gonna have to give me back 120 bucks. Well, you didn't have to do it. It was, you get, you're not out anything. You're gonna get the $100 back. That's why usury is considered bad because you didn't, it's, that's not the way we should earn money in the Middle Ages. You're looking at me like, that, that's really important to understand because they'll probably ask you something like that. All right, so now they are. Wait, so you shouldn't give money away? No, you shouldn't give money away and expect to get more money back in return. That's not work. You understand how that's not work? Okay, I got it right here. You, you put your hand in your wallet, pull it out, here's 100 bucks. That didn't cost you anything. You're gonna get the 100 bucks back. Why should you get 120 bucks back? You understand? Looked at that way, you can see why they, they look down on usury. It's different now because people don't borrow a hundred bucks. They borrow a thousand bucks. They borrow ten thousand bucks, you know, and um, we, we, there's, there's lots of reasons why we don't consider it a sin anymore, but it was a sin in those days because that's not how you should earn your money. You should work for it. Uh, that's why gambling, another reason gambling would not be, actually gambling is more, more work to gambling than there is usury. You know, you actually have to work to gamble, but that's that's a remember that's a different. We will see that in a minute. 
How did they get down the sheer cliff? Um, Lauren read that. How did they get down? The sheer cliff. They didn't have repelling ropes. They didn't have an airplane. They had parachutes. <coughs> How'd they do it? Look at it. They went down the rocks. Like what do you mean rocks? The rocks had fallen down. And That's exactly right. The, when Christ came, there was an earthquake. What, what do you mean when Christ came? When did he come? What? Remember right before he rose from the dead? That, that's very useful. Um, right before he rose from the dead, he descended into hell. We talked about that. It's called the harrowing of hell. Write that. If you don't know that, I might use that term, the harrowing of hell. H-A-R-R-O-W-I-N-G. That's what the book refers to it as. And when he entered hell, which circle did he enter? Yes, which circle was that? Second. Uh, the lustful in the second. Remember what circle he entered? That we're trying. We're actually reviewing right now. This is should be the which? The limbo. Limbo. First one. That's that's where uh, the Hebrew patriarchs were, and so he entered that. But when he entered, there was an earthquake, and here's evidence of it: this sheer cliff in circles before circle seven rocks tumble down so now instead of having to repel down a sheer cliff they walk down or they climb down you know it's like a, a, a natural staircase you see that all right so they are at the bottom and they see the centaur and they see the river of blood so let's turn the page um gracie top of page 144 Just a little louder. Look at, thank you. Look at question number 51. Did you see a triad of centaurs? Uh, who were they, Zach? Who were the triad of centaurs? You know, one thing I haven't done in a while, I haven't checked the answers to the questions. I guess that's sort of a given on my part that we're going over them. Why wouldn't you write them down? So uh, I'm going to do that. That, that, that's, if you haven't done them, then good luck. Because I, I, I'm not going to do it today. We're gonna, I'll do it when we finish. But. The triad of centaurs. I hope Will's not the only person that, yes, thank you, Mallory. Um, we're on 144, exactly. Did you get that? Circle. You want to say it again for me? Um, Nessus, Kieran, and Colin. Right, those are the three centaurs. That's a triad. What are they doing? Did you notice what they're doing? They're like, all standing there and waiting and like saying where they belong. Well, uh, yeah, they are talking to them, but look at uh, line 73. All around the foss, they sped in myriad bands, shooting at every soul that, that, that tries to lift higher out of the blood than doomed to man. So the people, the tyrants, the people in the, the river, 
if they try to get out, the centaurs shoot them with arrows. That's their job. They, they roam up and down the river, and anybody who tries to get out, they're going to have an arrow through them. And we already know why, why are, they appropriate, are they appropriate for this job? Half man, half horse. Uh, Mallory, half man, half horse. Um, because they're... We, we said it about the Minotaur. Uh, because they lost like, their temper when they acted angry. Yes, but why the half man, half horse thing? Man, half bull. Why are those appropriate? What's the image we just talked about? Yes. Well, because they're half man, half beast, and when they fire, they do the beast. Did you hear that? That's a really good answer. I don't know why any, you didn't get that. You know what she just said? Okay. I'd recommend that you listen. Um, half man, half beast. That's We don't want to be half man, half beast. We want to be all man, not half man, half beast. And anger is like that. Okay, so why don't we go on to, uh, I don't know where we are. We were, Gracie, Mallory, would you mind reading? 76. Okay, what do they notice about Dante? How the feet of the one behind move what they touch. What does that tell this? Uh, it was Curran, I think. Curran, yes. He's not dead. He's not dead. He has weight. He has mass. He has substance. You know, when he got on the, the, the boats, every time he got on the ferry, it would sink, and, and somebody would notice, hey, he shouldn't be here. And so they're noticing that he's alive. He's not dead. He's got a body. Keep going. So if he's a dead or not, or if he is my good guide now standing on his throne, what is the nature's story to the God? Quite true. He is alive. So on his lonely quest, he is must by nature to prevail for good. Necessity breaks his word, not sport or jest. From the scenes of Al Salazar in the light, came she who lay on me. Uh, Dionysus. Dionysus too. In fruit, fury, longing, fear, stretched his will, torn his clothes. That for a fair which walked with blackest streaks of red, his Azalino, and that fair haired one of Caesar's fair play. He whose light was cut out of, shall the blood bear by his steps on his throne. Thank you for reading so much. Um, and so uh, the question in 52 why do you think Karen? So readily accepts Virgil's explanation of why Dante is in hell. Said it's a necessity, but yes. Well, probably because he is top hero, but that is also went down to the middle. I, I can't hear you. He is also top hero, so been down to the middle. Okay, and also he says, "Now by the power that moves my steps at large on the wild way, he refers again to God obliquely, not directly. He doesn't mention God's Jesus's name or God's name there. He says." There's a power, the power. He talks about God as the power. How are, how are they going to get across the river? <clears throat> Why can't they walk across the river? Yeah. They're getting carried on the back of the Yes, Nessus. Nessus is going to carry, particularly Dante. Why can't Dante walk across the river? 
of boiling blood. He'll die. He'll die. He'll die. I wouldn't want to do it. Um, so he can't do it. He can't walk across. By, by the way, what's a, the ford of a river? Right. It, it's where you can cross the river without having to swim across it. That's called a ford. F O R D. It's a verb, too. You can ford a river. It's usually ankle deep or something like that. You can, you can get across. It's where the shoal is, right? We talked about that. Um, why don't we go to. Uh, I think she 118, I think. Or maybe 113. Which was it? Okay, good. I turn here. Further along. Further along. The centaur checked his pace beside the second gang. He seemed to start far as the throat stream before the break. Each showed one shade and set by itself apart, saying, So uh, across the river Phlegethon on the back of Nessus, uh, now they're on the other side. And notice who's in the river. Tyrants like Attila, um, Attila and uh, Alexander. So these are just famous tyrants who killed lots of people. So turn to page 149. We'll go to Zach. Zach, you can read the story in some of this. Uh, we are at question number 50. This is the wood of suicide. The, the poet sent her a pathos for the deer parties stood shrieking among the withered trees, which enclosed the souls of suicides. Pierre Del Vigny tells Dante his story and also explains how these shades come to be changed in the trees and what will happen to their bodies at the last day. The shades of two profligates rush through the wood pursued and torn by black hounds. Dante speaks to a bush containing the soul of a Florentine. Here Nessus had regained the bank beyond being pushed into a forest where no mark of any of these paths was to be found. No green here, but discolored leaves in the dark. No tender shoots, but risen and gnarled and tough. No fruit, but poison gallus on the withered bark. Wild beasts from tilt and pasture slinking off twixt Cassina and Corbetto, never come to lurk in the scrub so tangled or so rough. Here the foul heart beat nested in our helm, who chased the Trojans from their straw fates with dismal outcry ominous of doom. Wide winged like birds and lady faced are these, with feather belly broad and claws of steel. And there they sit and shriek on those strange trees. And the good master thus began, we are well, we are going further, thou shalt understand that now in this second rain he shall be filled, thou comest to the abominable sand, but now look well and see a thing whose telling might fill my credit with the honor. Already all around I heard a mournful wailing, but seeing none to wail, I stopped short, blinking bewilderedly as. Though my wits were failing, I think we must have 
because he said, if from these bells abounding thou wilt pluck off one small and single spray, thy thoughts will stagger at their own dumbfounding. Okay, thank you. So then the woods of suicide, he doesn't see anybody, but he hears people um, wailing or crying. Uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, wailing, mournfully. So he doesn't know where it's coming from. He's looking around, all these trees, but he doesn't see anybody. And then Virgil says, if you'll take the, you know, a, a branch from that tree over there and just you know, uh, break it off, you'll see something amazing. So let's see what happens when Dante takes the branch and breaks it from the tree. The trunk of the tree spoke to Dante. Then it grew dark with blood, and there with all cried out again, Why dost thou rend my bands? Breeds there no pity in thy beds at all. We that are turned to trees were once human, nay, thou shalt tender a more pious hand that we had been. All right, so it tells you what is the punishment here in this. They turn to trees. They, they become trees, and what's the reason for that? Because they hang from trees. Because what? They hang from trees. Yeah, I will get to that in a minute. The hanging part, we'll, we'll explain that in a minute. But why are they. Why have they become the tree? Well, the, the, it really could have been anything, it didn't have to be a tree. Except, why do you think trees are associated with suicide? You just said it. Because perhaps it must be because of Yeah, maybe, maybe hanging from trees. So anyway, that's coming up in a minute. Um, because they, they hated their body, right? They hated their life, so they, they killed themselves, right? That's what suicide is. We all know that. If that's what you did in this world, you'll never get your body back in the next. That's what the punishment is. So you, you get what you wanted. You didn't want your body. You didn't want a life. So you'll never get it back. So they become trees. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the other part in just, just a minute. Um, and when he broke the limb, it bled. That's kind of disgusting. It's, it's when you burn one end of a green brand, snap up the other bruises as the imprisoned airs expand. So from that broken spring came words and blood at once. I dropped the twig and like to one rooted to the ground with terror. There I stood. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Rachel, would you start? Oh, wicked soul, my day departed not. Might I have brought him straight away to the way to Okay, before you go on, uh, Virgil apologizes to the tree and says, I made him do it. Uh, I wanted him to see. He wouldn't have believed it if he hadn't have seen it. And so he apologizes to the tree and says, would you tell him your story? So that's what the, the tree is going to do. To this the trunk made answer, words so kind to me to speak, nor take it in ill part, for if at some length I'm lured to speak my mind. I am he that held both keys of Frederick's heart, to lock it to a lock, and will I be to tend them with so exquisite an art. I kept his counsel, and let few men do, loyal to my glorious charge that I remain, and sacrifice my sleep and my strength too. But that great harlot, which can ne'er refrain from Caesar's household, her adulterous eyes, the vice of kings, courts, and their common game, inflamed all hearts against me, and these likewise, flaming and flamed Augustus to distract, till my glad honor turns to upward cruise. So in the scornful spirit of disgust, and thinking to escape from my scorn by death, to my good self I made myself unjust. But by these strange new roots, my trunk to me, never to my most honor worthy lord, I swear to you, was I found fault with fate. And if to that bright world indeed restored, one of you goes, 
O heal my memory which lies in bleach from en envy and of soul. He paused there, and the poet said to me, While he is mute, let not this moment go, but speak and ask what more seems good to thee. All right, so um, thank you. Uh, look at the very top of the page, the margin at the top. Pierre Del Vigne, circle his name. He's on your review sheet. He's the tree. He's a real person in history. Pierre Del Vigne. All right, and he's the one they're talking to. What is Pierre Del Vigne's story? Did, did you pick up on that? Yeah. Was it Cleopatra? Um, actually, um, I'm not sure where it is, but I think it's somewhere in, in Europe instead of uh, Egypt. But he was the advisor to the king. Somebody lied about him and said he was a tra traitor to the king. So they put him in jail. And while he was in jail, he killed himself. So think about that. He was innocent until he killed himself. Then he became guilty. See that? There's no innocent, there's nothing, you're not guilty of, of being unjustly treated, but you are guilty if you kill yourself. So he used an unjust means to try to right a wrong but it doesn't work that way. All right, we'll take the fifth point. Read it. Explain what happens to the suicides when they die, as well as what eternal fate is. Why is this the case? Well, we can answer, we, you know the answer to the first one. What happens to the suicides when they die? Okay. Ian. Right, but we don't know the answer to the second one, so we've got to keep reading. So maybe Mallory can read. So did you see hear that? Minos throws them down to the wood of suicides as a, as a seed, sort of, and they fall into the ground and sprout into a tree. So they grow up into a tree. And the harpies, who are the harpies? Birds with faces of women. Um, and they, they eat on the tree. So that's like a punish, like a torture-like thing. They're, they're eating, biting, and that hurts the tree. Um, you want to read a little more? You shall take on flight when all souls take their flight. You seek on souls that are not to be delivered. To the spoils of the spoiler and not to be tied on. Who shall we judge in the gloomy place? Who shall they hang even each body evermore, born on the throne of its own self bodily shame? So you see, in, in the second coming, when people get their bodies back, the Bible says every human being will be resurrected either to judgment in hell or to heaven these people will get their body back but the body will hang on the tree that they they are inside of that they are so they are the tree and they have to look eternally at the body that's hanging there this is pretty disgusting and morbid uh, but remember these are unbelievers um, and the specifics are imaginary of course we don't know none of this is true necessarily but we we do know that um that in this case they bought their body hangs off a limb from the tree that they are okay you can keep reading Now comes the confessor first, and the second tidings help outstrip in the rush tide, led or by life 
All right, so uh, real quickly, uh, we're, we're done. After he talks to the tree, Pierre Delvigny, he sees these two guys running through the forest. One's name is Giacomo, and the other's name is Milano. And uh, let me just tell you briefly about them. They are gamblers and vandals. And they, uh, they were gamblers, and I'll tell you more about them Monday. I mean, I'll tell you more about them but one of them, I think it's Giacomo, jumps into a, a, a bush and becomes one, you know, like the tree. And the dogs come and bite it and grab it. So uh, we'll get to that tomorrow. Keep working on your review sheet. This test is Tuesday. So um, we're, we're pushing it to get to the end. We'll see. Tuesday. Tuesday. Are you going to finish? No. Remember, we're only going to do 15 chapters. I told you that from the beginning. If we don't get that far, we'll just pass on what we've got. See you later, April. Yeah, see you, man. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, Rich and I. See you later. Thank you. You're welcome.